This program contains video that may be disturbing to some viewers. Discretion is advised. From high speed chases to devastating wipeouts. Be prepared for the best of most shocking. First up, Deadly Black Eye sends a pickup straight into a semi. Then, a pursuit with an RV ends in a fiery finale. And later, watch a parachuter strike up the band. This is no movie. These are some of the most shocking moments ever caught on tape. Everything you're about to see is real. Brace yourself. This is the best of most shocking. He's running on foot. Fort Bend, Texas. Robbery suspect Joseph Flores ditched his car after a high-speed chase. But the law caught up with him. Okay, I got him. Flores was arrested and spent 11 months behind bars. Now, a year later, just one month after his release, he's on the run again. This time, Flores and his girlfriend shot two people during a robbery, including a cop. The sergeant came on and said, um, shots fired and he had been hit. Deputy Mike Waller joins in the furious pursuit. But the fleeing pickup soon leaves officers in the Texas dust. This guy was hell-bent on getting away. Officers split up in search of their prey. Suddenly, Waller spots the renegades pushing it to 70 down a side street. A potential death sentence for neighborhood children. I passed a kid on his bicycle on a sidewalk, and that was a reality check. It's kind of like, may remember where we are. Without warning, the chase takes a deadly turn. The girlfriend fires on Waller. She actually reached out the passenger window and aimed and fired three or four rounds. They were obviously, you know, would-be cop killers. Waller acts fast. With one hand on the wheel, he grabs an assault rifle from under his dash and fires. I think fired 12 rounds through the cab of the truck. And then they really took off. Flores has only one chance to escape, the open highway. We were headed towards the freeway. Sam just told me that that's where he was going to try to go. Waller is determined not to let it get that far. If I took out a tire, he was not going to be able to maintain control of the vehicle. Waller unloads another round of lethal force. Eight bullets tear into the truck's tires, but still, the suspects thunder onto the highway. I knew this guy wasn't going to last long. We continued southbound. I saw the tire starting to come apart. We started to come up into some traffic, and he started fishtailing. He lost it and came around one vehicle totally, um, from, from the rear all the way around the front. And there was a black pickup truck that was traveling southbound also, that when he fishtailed around, he, came, he hit that truck, spun that black truck out, and he continued on to hit the wall. Incredibly, Flores bails out, taking a blind leap over the wall, 20 feet straight down. But Waller's first concern is the trigger-happy girlfriend. I told her, don't even think about it, because that'd be the last thing she did. Only now can police turn their attention back to Flores, 
We had a visual on him, I mean, from the minute he exited the vehicle. History repeats itself, and Flores is once again apprehended. Two would-be cop killers turned Texas streets into a war zone. But thanks to one determined deputy, their reign of terror has hit a dead end. Moscow, Russia. In the dead of winter, the frigid waters of the Yauza River seep through its banks and onto the underground highway that runs beneath it. The dripping water freezes on the roadway, creating a layer of black ice. And the Lefortova Tunnel becomes a mile and a half long death luge. Motorists driving too fast can't stop in time. Hard-breaking buses careen out of control. And when the road brings commuters together... ...the results are disastrous. Road crews have barely enough time to clear one accident... ...before the next one hits. forest in Belgium. It's a cutthroat road race with bitter rivals. Hard turns. And close calls. And no one knows that better than driver Tim Mullen. You're out for yourself. You know, you have to be very selfish in this game. But I was doing well and uh, fighting for the championship. But when the driver of the yellow car tries to pass Tim, the race becomes a full contact sport. Going into the turn, Tim clips the yellow car's front bumper and careens out of control. He just stuck his nose in, we touched and, and that was it. 155 miles an hour, the car rockets into the wall. There was no way I was going to be able to do anything that was going to save the car. I just took my hands off the wheel, I closed my eyes and just said a wee prayer. A look from inside the vehicle shows just how chaotic the crash is. Tim struggles to get free as the wreckage erupts in flames. The driver's worst fear is being stuck in the car and it being on fire. Emergency workers spring into action. They get the fire out. And eventually, they get Tim out too. South Jordan, Utah. Police pull over a city work truck. The driver, Robert Hall, just tried to shoot his ex-wife. Officer Bill Bagshaw and fellow lawman approach with caution. We didn't know that he if he still had the weapon or if he had discarded it. And at that time, we believed he was still armed. Gotta go off, Loki. 
But Hall has no intention of going down easy. Get out of the car! He guns it. Hall races down the road, then does a quick about face. Officer Bagshaw is still approaching and finds himself squarely in the path of the homicidal madman. Hall's cruiser spins like a top following the head on crash. The, the first thought in my mind was, he's going to be turning left, he's going to be turning left, he can't be coming at me, he can't be doing this, this is going to hurt. Incredibly, the felon is conscious and still fighting. Bagshaw is in bad shape. I instantly went to try to get out of the vehicle to address the suspect, and my legs didn't move. I had a wave of fear just roll across me. I instantly thought, my God, I'm not going to walk out of this. With Hall finally secured, officers turned their attention to Bagshaw. Are you okay? The devastating crash leaves Bagshaw with two broken knees and a broken femur. Incredibly, he makes a full recovery. Fortunately, there's no break on the sentence for Hall. He'll be spending the next 35 years in jail. Wichita, Kansas. While on patrol, Deputy Robert Burkhead spots a woman standing on a bridge. But the agitated driver isn't having car trouble. I asked her if she was considering uh, hurting herself or throwing herself over the bridge, because that's the indication she was giving me. And she stated, yes, yes, I am. The deputy tries to break the tension but the woman remains on edge. She turned to walk away from me like she was gonna get back in her car and leave. I told her to come back with me. She turned and looked at me. I got that sick feeling in my stomach. Suddenly, the woman dashes for the railing and leaps. The deputy grabs hold of her dress and is dragged over the edge. Backup officer Doug Pryor watches in horror from his patrol car. I couldn't believe it was happening. I ran over to where they'd gone over, and I looked down, and Deputy Burkhead was hanging on by one arm. A bystander rushes in as Burkhead hangs on for dear life. He looked up at me and he was saying, help, help me, help. The two men pull the deputy back up onto the bridge. But the troubled woman has been swept away in the strong current. Officer Pryor then ran down the bridge, which was about 100 yards, and then back down to the river, which was about another 100 yards, jumped in the water with the, all, his, all of his equipment on. But there's a problem. Pryor can't swim. I more or less doggy paddled towards her. I got close enough I was able to grab her. And at that point, she did resist me in the water. And I told her, um, if you're going down the river, I'm going with you. In an act of incredible heroism, the officer pulls her safely to shore. The woman's recklessness almost cost two officers their lives. Thanks to their selfless actions, everyone survives.
I knew she would probably drown as strong as the current was. And, uh, she needed help. Cumberland, Rhode Island. The Let's Party store is a place where owner Russell Scharf lets the good times roll. We do birthday parties for children and adults, and we also sell retail party supplies. But just a few nights before Christmas, he's hit by an unexpected party crasher. A Jeep Cherokee wipes out $200,000 worth of holiday cheer. They traveled four or five aisles down, catapulting Santa Claus halfway across the store. Fearing that the crash has made the building unstable, the driver escapes outside. Three seconds after impact, you see the driver get out of the car and make a mad dash to leave the building. Russ arrives the next day to discover a devastating mess. But he also finds a silver lining. The Jeep narrowly squeezed between a telephone pole and his vintage automobile without leaving a scratch. Him missing my 1966 Chevy 2 Nova, which is a family heirloom, is a godsend to me. The man behind the wheel is not hurt, but he'll be picking up one hefty tab for this holiday bash. Statesboro, Georgia. Troopers chase a speeding couple in a stolen gray Jeep. It's a run from the law that's going to end badly. The wife is at the wheel. And Lieutenant Bobby Durden is on their tail. We received the information from the tag that the vehicle was stolen from South Carolina. I spotted it in town and attempted to stop it. The slick road getaway grows more hazardous by the minute. The perps floor it to an intersection and come within inches of flattening a truck. But their luck is about to run out. She would fly through and, and disregard any stop sign, a lot of people out on the roads, and it was dangerous. Cops race to catch up to the gas-guzzling duo. It's too late to save them from disaster. In a heart-stopping second, the Jeep swerves off the road and rockets into the air. Flipping end over end. But what happens next is even more horrifying. The driver is ejected and slammed face first onto the blacktop. Lady was flung out. It was like slow motion, like, you know, it, this is not happening. As the woman lies motionless, the man crawls from the wreckage. Though injured, officers know he's dangerous. They aren't taking any chances. And they arrest him at gunpoint. Remarkably, both suspects survive and are charged for reckless driving and auto theft. There's no way someone could live through that. When this car-thieving couple runs from the law, they almost pay the price with their own lives. Denton County, Texas. A deputy pulls a reckless driving suspect out of his vehicle. Sergeant William Townsend provides backup. I arrived on scene, pulled in behind the suspect's vehicle, which was a blue Chevy truck with Oklahoma plates, and observed Deputy Byram speaking with the subject. The driver is John Pate. The truck is stolen. The officer is prepared to do a registration check. Pate gets ready to run. 
Mr. Pace started looking uh, north to south, uh, appearing to what we call having a little rabbit in him. The suspect spots a possible escape. The unmarked police car next to his truck has been left with the engine running. Pate goes for it. Hey, man, get back over here. I think running was a spur of the moment thing. I think stealing the deputy's car was a spur of the moment thing because his vehicle was blocked in. Get out of the car! Get out of the car! The deputy is outraged. Be advised, we were just out, we just stole my vehicle. They're chasing one of their own high powered police cruisers, and the fugitive is outrunning them. I stole my vehicle, my county car car. Pate swerves into a ditch. Other units join the chase. The outlaw blazes at over 100 miles an hour. Officers call for spike strips. There's just one problem. The car thief hears every word. The deputy's radio very well may have been monitoring the traffic that we were sending out. Pate plots a detour. He tries to turn onto a dirt road. The stolen Crown Vic crashes. Pate still has a touch of rabbit in him. But his wild escape ends in the sights of a police pistol. Some of the statements that he made after being restrained by the constable and the pilot point officers was that you know, he was looking forward to going back to prison and that he would have a nice story to tell him. But cops make sure this sneaky crook's crime story has an unhappy ending. Jacksonville, Florida. An officer following a pickup truck suspects a trunk behind the wheel. Especially when the driver nearly runs a red light. Hey, doing, sir? Yes, sir. So if you got your driver's license? Sure. The man offers up his license, military ID, and the distinct odor of alcohol on his breath. You still out here to talk to me for just a moment? But right now, stepping anywhere proves to be a challenge. Sir, you're off on steady. How much do you have to drink tonight? Uh, probably about four beers. About four beers? Yes, sir. Do well, you think you're okay to be driving? Yes, sir. Well, I want to make sure of that, okay? The man is clearly inebriated, so the officer drives him to a nearby parking lot for the official test. The suspect stumbles into position and the test begins. Take your left index finger, reach out and touch the top of that pin so I know you can see it, all right? I'm right, going to touch the top of the pin so I know you can see it. The top, sir. The top. Oh, there, okay. For drinking four beers, his performance is even worse than expected. Take any kind of medication. Uh, value. Value? Okay, you take all it over here with your eyes, sir. You take that today? Yes, sir. But the way the man handles the next test is even more telling. I need you to help me out. We're going to make up a line. Can you hold on to the end of that tape for me real tight? Okay, so sit down on the ground right there in front of you. Oh! The man leans over to lay down the tape and takes a nosedive on the asphalt. For several seconds, the officer is speechless. And so is the suspect. Luckily, the man is feeling no pain until tomorrow morning. A beer and Valium cocktail got him pulled over. You under a doctor's care for anything, sir? But it was the face plant that sealed his fate. 
coming up. A boat race to the finish nearly becomes a deep sea grave. And after cops clear one accident, they find themselves in the path of another. And later, a trooper sets up spikes to stop a fleeing fugitive, but it's headed right for him. When most shocking rages on. Plymouth, England. At the World Powerboat Championship, international crews rev their million dollar vessels to insane speeds. In this race for glory, competition is fierce. And in their 1800 horsepower boat, pilots James Shepard and Chris Parsonage are gunning extra hard for the top prize. Okay, Chris, we might as well just push like hell. Last lap. Stuck in second place with one lap to go, the British team pushes their craft, the King of Shaves, to its limits. This is over 270 kilometers an hour. Unfortunately, this team will never make it to the finish line. Absolutely massive. King of Shaves has crashed. The King of Shaves hits the lead boat's wake. And Barrow rolls into oblivion. The in-cab camera shows the upside-down pilot's terror. As water surges into the cockpit. As they search for signs of life, spectators hold their collective breath. And they're not the only ones. Beneath the waves, James and Chris struggle to escape from what could be their grave. Finally, after what seems like an eternity, first one, then two heads break the surface. Oh, and there comes Parsonage. Incredibly, the pilots survive the devastating crash. There is stunned disbelief, I can tell you. The line between success and misfortune, surely never finer. These thrill-seeking speed demons had their eye on the prize until a monumental mishap almost ended their lives. Knoxville, Tennessee. Officer Dennis Bible and his partner, G.T. George, are on scene of a two-car accident. These motorists are the rain-slicked highway's latest victims. There were three that I know of accidents that happened uh, in that same spot the same day. I think that spot's dangerous because it's a very sharp turn. Uh, the roads were somewhat wet. I didn't do well yet. Bible and his partner are just wrapping up. When without warning, an SUV screams out of control. When I heard the uh, the noise, I, I didn't look. I, I knew what it had to be. It wasn't going to be good. And I just ran. Not much time to think about things, really. Just kind of react. Officer George barely escapes certain death. And my partner didn't take the time to look. It uh, was really close with him. He's pretty shook up. To this day, he doesn't know how to talk about it. Bible makes a quick break for the woods, pushing two civilians out of the path of the careening car. Remarkably, no one is injured in the crash. In this case, wet roads are not to blame for the near disaster. During this incident, the driver was distracted. Uh, evidence at the scene showed that he was uh, apparently uh, putting marijuana into a uh, cigar at the time. He's charged with reckless driving and possession of marijuana. Bible and his partner return to the road knowing that danger can be just seconds away. You have to value life and live every day like it could be the last one because we're not promised the next second. 
I consider myself very lucky. Fort Hall, Idaho. Officers get into position to intercept a speeding fugitive. As the assault suspect charges their way, Trooper Matt Manning tosses spike strips across the road. Little does he know, the driver has no intention of hitting them. At the last second, Manning notices something on the horizon. Moments later, the suspect swerves around the spikes at 70 miles an hour and smashes the patrol car. Trooper Manning makes a narrow escape. He jumps clear just before his cruiser is pulverized. Dennis Dixie pleads guilty to felony assault and gets four years behind bars. But he's lucky he even survived when his wild ride from justice was stopped dead in its tracks. Lake County, Ohio. Trooper Bill Davis makes a traffic stop along a busy stretch of highway. He's seen enough accidents in these situations to know two things. One, he should stand on the passenger side of the car. And two, he should keep a sharp ear out for the sound of squealing tires. Watch again. A car traveling 70 miles an hour loses control, slamming the stop sedan. Davis scrambles to safety in the ditch. But the struck woman screams in hysterics. Davis climbs back up to the road to check on her. She's rattled, but not seriously injured. Stay in the car! Stay in the car! The officer radios for assistance, grateful that he and everyone else involved has just dodged a major bullet. After all, when the crossfire consists of 3,000 pound automobiles, people don't always walk away. Lincoln County, Nebraska. Weeks of freezing rain have left the interstate treacherous and littered with wrecks. Deputy Larry Meyer stops in front of the latest accident. A jackknife semi. I parked uh, approximately 200 yards uh, west of the scene, and my primary function was to get, to get the vehicle slowed down so that the wrecker could do their job. It works, but not on cars coming the other direction. A fast-moving pickup fishtails on the frozen blacktop. He skids through the median. The 18-wheeler hits the brakes just before impact. It looked very bad, and, and our concern, of course, was for the gentleman in the pickup. You know, pickup versus the semi. Uh, the semi is going to win. The driver of the semi exits his cab, rattled but uninjured. Deputy Meyer races to his car. He pulls along the other side of the big rig and is surprised to find the pickup's owner up and walking. He assured me right away that he was fine, that uh, it was obvious that he had been wearing a seatbelt and that the airbags had done done their job. Deputy Meyer knows drivers won't always be so lucky when Mother Nature grabs control of the wheel. Oh 
suburban New Jersey. The night is still young, but this bash is already out of control. And this bottle of 190 proof alcohol might have something to do with it. But apparently these boozing buddies don't think the liquor has enough heat. So party goer Paul Morse has the brilliant idea to get lit. While it's burning. In an instant, Paul flares up like a torch. And then he literally breathes fire. Toasting the kitchen countertop with his new flame-throwing mouth. It just turned it turned into this fireball. The counter was on fire, floor was on fire, my face was on fire. It, it just happened like this. I don't <laughs> As Paul squeals in agony. Ow, it hurts my <laughs> Onlookers help by screaming and doing nothing. I mean, being on fire is not quite like anything else. It's not a feeling because in the moment, you know, you're, you're focused on, oh, I'm on fire. We should put this out. Finally, another dimwit attempts to put out the blaze with a cardboard box, which, of course, also catches on fire. Turns out nobody told Paul he was supposed to extinguish the shot before drinking it. But that wasn't his only mistake. We, we didn't have a shot glass, so we got a candlestick holder, and the edges of it are flared. And so I guess when the liquid started to pour over the edge, it didn't just come through. Like, it was going down a little tube. It, like, came out. But then Paul's biggest mistake was probably doing the shot in the first place. I don't really think there is a point to taking a shot of Flaming Everclear. It's a very bad decision. Washington, D.C. A rowdy group of high schoolers tear it up on a late night binge. Snow rolls, big ass. The boys burn rubber in a department store parking lot. But when that gets old, they decide to burn something else. An unsuspecting bystander's car. They're going to park right next to him and throw the car at him. The drive-by turns into an unintentional blow-up. The goons get their comeuppance when the fireworks explode in their own car. High on their adrenaline rush, <laughs> Look <at> that smoke. <laughs> the small-time arsonists don't realize that they could have gone up in flames. This went off like right in the middle of the car. There's pieces of firework everywhere. <laughs> Luckily, no one is injured. At least, not seriously. <laughs> it burned my ass! Alright, let me get out of here. Yeah, right, we'll Though their actions were illegal, in the end, there was no need to call in the heat. They brought it themselves. <laughs> it burned my ass! Toledo, Ohio. Cops can't believe what they're seeing. A wanted man is trying to make a getaway in the family RV. And he's driving his massive motor home like a Maserati. Four oh five, I saw one male look like he's falling thin with a red skirt. Oh, he's going to have to 35-year-old Timothy Kurth jumped bail on an assault charge and stole his uncle's rig. The RV picks up speed, veers across lanes, and outmaneuvers a squadron of cruisers. Cops decide there's only one way to bring it to a halt. Flatten the tires. Drive. 
The spikes are set up at an intersection. The RV swerves right and dodges the trap. I don't think they got him. But we can get somebody at Ottawa Drive. More spikes are set out. This time, they hit home. Looks like the front ones are gone. Shredded tires fly into the path of police cruisers. He's only got one tire in there. Back tires are out. Then a shower of sparks. And flames. It's on fire. We're gonna need fire out here. It's now a massive rolling fuse. The RV could explode at any second. Without warning, the streaking comet dives off the road. He's driving into the river! The two-ton fireball roars down a boat ramp and plunges into a river. The RV renegade is pulled from the water and taken into custody. Fortunately, his desperate run from the law went down in flames. Camden, New Jersey. The gray station wagon, two black males. On a snowy day, Trooper John Hayes stops a car for rolling through a red light. On top of the moving violation, neither one of the occupants is wearing a seatbelt. Both will be issued tickets. But first, Hayes needs the passenger's information. Do you have any idea on you, sir? No. No idea on you at all? No. Paycheck, job, anything like that? No. No? Okay. Is that your first name, sir? Sergeant Daniel Ellington arrives to assist the trooper, just as tensions with the suspect escalate. If I don't get your right information, I'm taking the county jail and you're lodging on your John Doe, and you're going to stay there until you come up with your true identity. The man continues to play dumb. The back car. The back car is dumb. The officers give him every chance. Now he's going downtown. But they still need to search the car. Is there anything to question about? Oh, I'm searching the car. No, I gave you my license for the search. The guy suddenly demands to see his attorney. I want my lawyer if you want to search my car. A heated argument ensues. No, I have to search the car because I locked him up. I'm going to answer that. I do with him. He's under arrest too. He's got a Without warning, the man guns it. It's a fatal mistake. Both officers hold on as the suspect peels out. Trooper Hayes jumps free. But Sergeant Ellington is in danger of falling under the wheels. He has no choice. The driver is shot and crashes into another car. The wreck sends Ellington sliding across the street. Amazingly, he's not seriously injured. But the offender is mortally wounded. Before long, authorities find the secret both men risk so much to protect. In the crash, a large amount of cocaine was dislodged from under the seat. It's the toughest call any officer has to make when to use deadly force. For Daniel Ellington, the decision was made when the fleeing felon put his foot on the gas and the sergeant's life on the line.
routine stop at a gas station takes a shocking turn. And more trouble at the raceway when a car gets obliterated. And later, witness the violent end of a high-speed pursuit. When the best of most shocking continues. Parker, New York. Filling up your tank in a storm is never fun. And for William Hall, it's about to turn deadly. As William exits his truck, he gets the shock of his life. A bolt of lightning crashes down just a few feet away. Over a million volts travel across the rain-slick concrete and slam the driver to the ground. Kimberly Fenn, William's fiance, is in the passenger seat when the lightning strikes. I'm sitting in the, the car and I'm playing with the radio and all of a sudden, the brightest orange I've ever seen, the brightest white I've ever seen, and then the most thunderous crack I've ever heard. I didn't know what was going on. I looked back to see where Sam was, and he wasn't there. Kimberly runs to check on him. It doesn't look good. He was just laying there, and he wouldn't talk to me, and I couldn't feel a pulse, and I just thought, oh, my gosh, you know, what am I going to do? I really did think he was dead. Other bystanders move in as Kimberly tries desperately to revive her fiancé. I had been yelling at him, if you can hear me, you better talk to me right now. You know, you better talk to me. And I seen his eyelids flutter. Paul finally comes to, dazed and literally in shock. Last thing I remember was just enormous, enormous boom. I can hear it as I'm going down. I just feel every muscle in my body tightening up at the same time. I'm seeing this light and I'm hearing the sound. And total darkness after that but even though William is awake he's still in bad shape very numb very shaky couldn't catch my breath my heart was beating real rapid I couldn't get focus on anything I just had no control over my my muscles at the time within minutes rescue workers arrive on scene and after a stunning hit, William's only physical injuries are a few blisters. I came out the winner. I'm the one who survived something like that. It's truly phenomenal that anybody would ever live through that. It is unbelievable. Sarah's Argentina. A downpour hits an already slick racetrack, sending drivers skidding into the mud. But these speed demons aren't letting up on the gas, which for one man means going above and beyond. Barreling down the straightaway, Champion driver Walter Salas gets boxed in. I was being blocked from the car ahead of me, and one guy was trying to pass me from behind, but the visibility was very bad. The racer doesn't see the rear end collision coming. The jolt shoots him into the wet grass, then launches him off a curb. Salas spins through the air at over 100 miles an hour. I just close my eyes and I pray to God to help me out to protect me. The shell shatters into a million pieces. But amazingly, Walter's roll cage stays intact. And what's left of the car crash lands on a service road 20 feet below. 
crowds gather as rescue crews scramble to cut Salas from the wreckage. I was feeling pain all over my body. It's, it's just scary. The driver will spend the next few days laid up. But thanks to his vehicle's safety features, he's released from the hospital with no lasting injuries. It's a dangerous sport and you have to be prepared for, for everything. The rain may have put a damper on this race, but since Salas's car sheltered him from the impact, his career isn't a total wash. Pasadena, California. An amateur videographer captures the final moments of a high-speed police chase. The suspect's stolen car barrels through a red light and slams into an unsuspecting motorist at full force. Sparks ignite into a fireball as the mangled vehicle skid into the side of a building. Police are on the scene in seconds. They drag the auto thief from the wreckage and slap him with cuffs. While more cops help the injured victim out of his burning car. But the danger isn't over. Flames leap out near the ruptured gas tank and officers race to clear the area. They make it to safety just as the car blazes out of control. The fire department arrives and manages to contain the inferno. In the end, the victim is rushed to the hospital with a concussion. While the fugitive, 33-year-old David George, suffers multiple broken ribs. He pleads no contest to grand theft auto and felony evading. And after this high-speed pursuit ended in a fiery multi-car pileup, his hopes of a speedy getaway were quickly extinguished. Rome, Georgia. Cameras catch a thug making a smashing entrance. The goon is really an arsonist, and not a very smart one. As he douses the mini mark with lighter fluid, he doesn't realize he's creating a flammable fume. Vapors thicken, even as he takes time to splash the security camera. Then, with the strike of a match, the store ignites like a tinderbox. 2,000 degree flames engulf the perp turning him into a blistering fireball. He hot puts it out the door. The store is toast and everything inside is destroyed. Except the surveillance footage, which is safe in another room. The fire starter is at large, but police know they'll get their man sooner or later at the local burn ward. Austin, Texas. A suspected drug dealer tries to outrun deputies in a neighborhood near a high school. Seneca Johnson is carrying a load of cocaine and angel dust. But Johnson can't shake the squad cars. His passenger decides to make an emergency exit. His buddy is gone, but Johnson still has the drugs and a high-risk getaway plan. He's going to bail out with the van in gear and still moving. Johnson gets ready to jump, but changes his mind. Rounding a turn, the dealer sees another chance. He breaks to five miles an hour, grabs his drug stash, and then... Johnson stumbles on the street. 
and gets slammed by the squad car he was trying to escape. The impact shakes him right out of his shoes. His driverless van rolls toward an SUV, clips it, and crashes into a tree. Back on his feet, he tries to sprint away from officers, but is quickly caught. The drug dealer's desperate leap for freedom landed him right in the arms of the law. Douglas County, Georgia. A car with illegally blacked out windows is pulled over by police. Deputy Lane Thompson instantly smells something suspicious. When I approached the vehicle, I immediately detected a smell of uh, burnt marijuana coming from the car. And while they were getting their license, on the passenger's lap, I could see uh, little bitty pieces of marijuana. Another patrol unit joins the deputy. He runs a records check. Suddenly, break line. Yeah, he's going. the driver peels out. Both units give chase. Officer Ashley Sanders is in the backup cruiser. The uh, driver was darting in and out of traffic, hitting the emergency lanes. He was driving very aggressively. He was coming up on cars, bumpers, pretty much forcing them to get out of the way. And it continued at speeds of over 100 miles an hour. We did reach 120. The car spews a cloud of white. But it's not just smoke from the engine. It's also a stash of cocaine. At one point, they opened the passenger side door and started throwing cocaine out of the door because when he would throw it out the window at the high rate of speed, the cocaine was blown back in the car. The suspects speed down the shoulder past a convoy of trucks. The driver of one of the 18-wheelers tries to help out. With us being on, on the interstate and on I-20, there's a lot of tractor trailer traffic. And I, I think the tractor trailer got involved by hearing the police chase coming by the other truckers talking on the CB. And this vigilante trucker has extra muscle. He's hauling a military combat tank. The big rig blocks them in. One suspect breaks for the woods. The other fugitive marches toward the cruisers. A police canine is on him in a flash. But in the midst of the confusion, something goes terribly wrong. I was uh, putting handcuffs on the driver when I felt a pain in my left foot, and I thought that the K-9 had bit me in the back of the ankle. It's not the dog, it's the truck. As the big rig pulls away, over 10 tons of cargo rolls right over the deputy's feet. Both of my feet and both of my legs had an immediate burning sensation like I had my feet stuck in a hot fire. My mouth went cotton mouth. I, I don't remember jumping up, walking to the guardrail. I don't remember taking my, my shoes off. My body was in a state of shock. Officer Sanders apprehends the passenger in the woods. When he hears his colleague's screams. I saw they were cutting his boots off, and I saw that his feet appeared to be flat, and they were bleeding. The deputy is fortunate. Doctors will not have to amputate his feet, but it takes months for him to recover. Both my feet were crushed, and both my feet, I have a deep bone bruising, severe nerve damage and soft tissue damage. And in my right foot, I had one broken bone on the top of my foot. Officer Thompson is the only person injured in what could have been a fatal pursuit. There could have been a, possibly a, a, big, a big wreck with the way the guy was driving. If the injuries I sustained was to save somebody else's life, I'm glad it happened to me, rather than somebody innocent getting killed. Warren, Rhode Island. 
Tom Massey is cashing in a winning lottery ticket. Today's his lucky day. He just doesn't know how lucky. A truck smashes right through the store and plows straight for Tom. All I heard was a great big crash, boom. I have nowhere to go, glasses hitting me. Then all of a sudden, there's this truck behind me. Tom escapes certain death or serious injury by less than a foot. Dude, it's that close. I mean, he's right behind me, inches. I don't know how he missed me. I have no idea. The driver of the truck loses control and slams into the store at 40 miles an hour. After the car came through, the driver was all worried, afraid that he hit someone. The store is known for selling winning lottery tickets. But today, Tom leaves with an even bigger prize. His life. I'm very lucky. Luckier than winning a lottery. It could be people putting flowers on my grave. But I'm here, <laughs> here to stay. Wichita Falls, Texas. Icy roads create serious problems on the interstate. Trooper Mike Rivard keeps an eye on traffic while road crews prepare to remove a wrecked car from the shoulder. We were just finishing up the accident scene. We were almost through. The tow truck was pulling beside the patrol car. Probably within five to 10 minutes, the scene would have been cleared. But there's trouble on the horizon. A speeding Porsche loses control on the ice and snow. The driver is unable to stop. The flatbed tries to swerve clear. But there's no time. A dog riding on the back of the truck is uninjured. The dog could sense the tow truck was going to be struck by the car. He braced himself, and he rode the accident out. But the human passengers have worse fates. Both suffer injuries. It's a reminder that bad timing, bad fortune, and Mother Nature's fury can create a devastating perfect storm. Just when you think things are about to finish up, that's when disaster strikes. Up next, terror on the freeway as a semi goes sideways. And deadly black ice launches a semi into a horrifying chain reaction. And later, a drunk renegade pulverizes an unsuspecting motorist. When the best of most shocking returns. Grand Rapids, Michigan. This big rig is in big trouble. A traffic cam captures the semi as it rolls over on the freeway. The truck hits the turn at such a high rate of speed, its 14-ton payload shifts to one side, causing it to topple. Remarkably, no passing cars are crushed by the semi. And the trucker walks away with barely a scratch. 
However, he does receive a ticket for speeding. But it's a small price to pay, considering the alternative. Erlanger, Kentucky. Officers Bill Allen and Doug Eagler respond to an accident on an ice-glazed freeway. It was a single vehicle on the left-hand side. Um, I tried to stop probably a couple hundred feet behind it, and as, as I hit my brakes, we just started to slide. Vehicles race by, heedless of the poor road conditions. I knew that it was bad. I knew that it was a bad situation. It's about to get even worse. Are you all right? I made it through Okay. While the policemen help the shaken motorist, another car is headed straight for them. As a Chevy hits the squad car from behind, the video goes out. We're probably out of our cars. 10 seconds, 15 seconds, and my cruiser was rear-ended by, by another vehicle. The impact spins the cruiser, and the camera comes back on, now facing oncoming traffic. A red Acura manages to stop. Just off-screen to the right, Eagler struggles to get a female driver out of the wrecked Chevy. Tons of truck and trailer obliterate three vehicles. Just seconds after the massive accident, another semi clips the patrol car. While the man inside the Acura has no chance to get out, Eagler pulls the woman free from the Chevy just in time. Remember is grabbing her and throwing her down uh, against the wall about six or eight feet we kind of jumped and I threw her at the same time the aftermath looks grim miraculously the man in the Acura survives the crash with barely a scratch and the woman squeezes through with a minor abrasion from her seatbelt. With quick thinking and a little luck, everyone involved skates by with their lives. Salt Lake City, Utah. A speed trap met suspect Jesse Garcia in an obvious rush. I'm trying to get to my girlfriend, she's on 13th South. What are you trying to get there for? What can take her? You want to like fly to the reason? Okay, I can't leave. Just leave. If there was ever an understandable reason for speeding, this is it. What do you call? Do you want to call paramedics to get there? Yeah, if you would. Where's she at? At the house? But when the patrolman asks for the girlfriend's address... 13th South and 140 West. The real story is revealed. The officer catches up fast. For a moment, it looks like Garcia realizes that running was a mistake. But it's just another ruse. We're about uh, 300 west, 250 west. And we're back from here again. Garcia's misguided game of cat and mouse is a dangerous one, as he's about to find out. The man charges headlong into cross traffic. The SUV T-bones him at full speed and flips. Surprisingly, 
Surprisingly, Garcia is uninjured. But the passenger of the SUV tumbles onto the pavement in obvious pain. While the officer tries to render aid, Garcia snakes out his window and callously walks away. Thankfully, he doesn't get far. When police finally nab him, they discover that Garcia is dead drunk. There never was a bleeding girlfriend. Just an inebriated tall tale that ultimately came crashing down. The last place a cop wants to be is in the middle of a soccer riot. Because trying to quell several thousand raging hooligans can be like playing with your life. At a soccer game in Serbia, a riot erupts after rival teams clash on the field. And the fired up fans have set the stadium ablaze. Police try to arrest the troublemakers when suddenly one thug rushes in with a burning flare and in a cold-blooded move jams it in an officer's face at first he beats the lawman over the head with blinding fury but when that vicious attack doesn't do the trick he literally tries to blow him away. Police pepper spray the monster before he can attack again. He's later found guilty of attempted murder and receives 10 years behind bars. But while this guy's searing attack could have snuffed out the cop's flame, some rioters march to the beat of a different drum. At this championship soccer match in Veracruz, Mexico, the home team has just lost the big game. Now some angry spoil sports are taking their frustrations out on fellow fans. Innocent spectators stampede to escape the Rager's violent protest. And now it's up to riot police to protect them. But their mere presence whips the goons into a frenzy. As officials try to clear the stands, the bullies take aim at them. Using every instrument at their disposal, literally. One mischief maker waits for the perfect shot then hurls a bass drum right at an officer's head. The blow knocks the cop off his feet, sending him down five rows. Then, incredibly, a reveler jumps in to retrieve the musical mortar shell. Eventually, authorities remove the most violent instigators. And it's the same all over the world. Because wherever crazed soccer fans try to turn a friendly game into a death match, police will be there to even the score. Gahana, Ohio. Sergeant Sheila Murphy pulls over a familiar driver for speeding. Throw your down. Set the door. A man she's had trouble with before. What do you have illegal on you? You are in the car. Knives, weapons, narcotics. Because we're not having a repeat of the last time. Do you understand me? The last time she stopped him, the man resisted arrest. And it looks like he's ready for round two. I asked you a question. Answer it directly. I'm not answering. Get out of the car. 
Sergeant Murphy pulls out a taser and calls for help. Step it up, step it up. Step it up, step it up. Backup cruisers speed toward the scene. Meanwhile, the hostile driver is showing no signs of cooperating. Get out of the car. I'm going to shoot you with this taser. You understand me? Get out of the car. Now! A curious neighbor walks over. He's ordered to stay clear. The officer tasers the hulking suspect, but it only enrages him. He rushes from the car and attacks. Two units race to Sergeant Murphy's aid. The offender has her in a headlock. Murphy's taser is knocked from her hand. The attacker seizes the weapon and gives the sergeant a jolt. He even grabs a mace and sprays the cops. But another shot from the taser does the trick. The suspect is wrestled under control and handcuffed. Sergeant Murphy's high voltage ordeal is finally over. The belligerent driver is lucky she chose to use non lethal force, even though her life was in danger. Lexington County, South Carolina. An officer pursues a car that just left a brawl at a high school graduation party. Backup joins the chase, ready to help bust the fleeing fighter. Suddenly, as the driver barrels around a bend, he crashes into a tree. And the cops get more than they bargained for. Four more, to be exact. When this team piles up, his combative companions pile out. The five fugitives scatter into the woods, splitting up to lose their pursuers. They don't realize there's a cop for every kid, and even a canine to help round them all up. It didn't seem like a situation that would need backup to save the day. But when the suspects unexpectedly multiplied, police had the numbers to divide and conquer. Still to come, a domestic dispute ends in a violent crash. And an early morning criminal gets wrecked out hard. And later, biker daredevils get more than they could ever bargain for. When the best of most shocking continues. Davie, Florida. A squad of police cars pursues a man wanted for domestic violence. The fleeing suspect, William Rosenbaum, just assaulted his wife with a gun. Here you see Broward Sheriff's uh, Aviation Unit. The suspect rummages in the front seat, reaching for his weapon. Rosenbaum drives like a maniac and charges blindly through a red light. He 
he barely misses ramming a pickup. Seconds later, the suspect blows through another intersection. Then thunders across a median. When the Jeep skids off the road, one officer jumps out of his cruiser, weapon drawn in warning. Rosenbaum suddenly opens fire. The officer has no choice but to defend himself. Shooting fire. Clock shot fired. The driver charges into oncoming lanes unscathed, but his vehicle is not as lucky. He does have a tire out. One of his, his rear tire is out. The pursuit is about to go horribly wrong. That tire's disintegrated. Oh! The Jeep swerves off the shoulder toward trees on the roadside. Then smashes into one with devastating force. Rosenbaum is pulled from the wreckage. He later passes away. Not from crash injuries, but a gunshot wound to his head. An autopsy reveals the fatal bullet wasn't from an officer's weapon. The despondent man took his own life. What began with an assault ended in a chilling impact police officers won't soon forget. Forestville, Maryland. Terrence Brooks is out for an early morning run from police. And he's driving a stolen car. Two Maryland units try to box in the driver. But he slips through the cracks. Policy prevents the officers from using a pit maneuver. But the suspect is under no such constraints. He bounces off cars. Wrinkling his hood. But onward he goes. The wounded vehicle blinds its pursuers with a smoke screen. Moments later, Brooks avoids another box in by cutting right. Straight toward a parked car. He dodges the accident, but the jolt throws his hood up in his face. Now he's the one who's driving blind. He drifts back onto the sidewalk and runs out of road. Stopped by a pole, the perp surrenders. Police take him down. Brooks faces charges of assault on police officers. Reckless driving and malicious destruction of property. With the dawn just arriving, the sun has officially set on his criminal career. Palma, Spain. Illegal street racers gather huge crowds on a Friday night. These backstreet gamblers roll the dice with death at over a hundred miles an hour. But when a hot rodder shows off his ride, he burns out more than rubber. The car skids straight into the path of speeding daredevils. The bikes keep going, taking out spectators at the knees. As for the riders, this man's helmet flies off, and it's skull versus concrete. He lands head first at breakneck speed, tumbling across the asphalt. Incredibly, both bikers escape with minor injuries. After coming this close to the graveyard, these speed junkies will think twice before they roll the bones again.
Tyler, Texas. It's the end of Trooper Joseph Hogue's shift. He spots a driver not wearing his seatbelt. The offender doesn't pull over. Incredibly, he motions to go around. Try to pull up beside him, trying to motion for him to pull over. And the driver came to a sliding stop. Both cars are in the middle of the road. Hogue's all alone. There's no backup for Miles. Get out. Put your hands on the car. Then. The driver's crazed out of his skull on PCP. Hogue muscles the blabbering druggie into a half Nelson and tries to pull him down. Hogue needs help. He never radioed his position. Worse, there's another suspect in the truck. The passenger yells for his wasted pal to cooperate. But the fight goes another round. Hogue uses every ounce of strength to control the lunatic. Even pepper spray can't stop the madman. It was obvious to me that he had, you know, quite some strength. It's kind of an all-out war in the middle of the road. Finally, he grabs the car's radio to call for help. 1493, Tyler, give me... Somebody, now it's a battle of who will last the longest. You're not gonna win. Don't move. What is he on? Whatever you got. It's more than alcohol. Help finally arrives, just in time for the exhausted hoe. My mom is the devil. The blitzed perk gets hauled by three cops into a squad car. It's his second and last trip of the night. Chandler, Arizona. The sport of top fuel hydro racing is full of thrilling victories and disastrous defeats. This round goes bad in an instant. The pilot loses control right from the start. His back end hitches up and he starts to wobble. He can't compensate. The craft spins into a horrifying barrel roll at 250 miles an hour. There's nothing he can do to stop what happens next. The boat splinters and explodes. The daredevil is lucky. His capsule disengages and launches clear of the tumbling wreckage. It's the only part not pulverized in the accident. Still, rescue crews have to work fast to extricate him before his oxygen runs out. Thanks to his escape pod, the driver gets away without any injury. In this boat race, the objective might have been for a big win. But this pilot was lucky just to stay afloat. Fort Riley, Kansas. The whole town comes out for the Army's change of command ceremony. And to kick it off, the band plays a fanfare while skydivers make a grand entrance. The first parachuter looks a little out of control, but it's all for show, and he lands no problem. 
the second skydiver also appears to lose control. Unfortunately, this time, it's not an act. Approaching the field at nearly 50 miles an hour, the paratrooper steering flaps tangle. He slams into three band members, knocking them flat. Combat medics hurry to the band's aid. Seconds later, an ambulance takes the three staff sergeants to the hospital. While the airman is treated for a sprained ankle. Amazingly, all of the injured band members make a complete recovery. After this dive bomber's landing, hit a wrong note. South Bend, Indiana. Sergeant Ray Wolfenbarger tries pulling over a car with no headlights. He assumes it's just a drunk driver playing hard to get. The officer has no way of knowing. It's the last traffic stop he'll ever make. The fleeing sedan slams into a utility pole. Wolfenbarger runs in, gun raised as a precaution. It's not enough. The driver tumbles out and takes off. Dodging two shots from the cop. Incredibly, the suspect's rounds hit the barely exposed areas above and below the sergeant's bulletproof vest. He's rapidly bleeding out. By the time help arrives, the situation is grim. Paramedics give the injured officer only a 5% chance of survival. But miraculously, Wolfenbarger pulls through. And no point in time throughout this whole thing did I ever think I was going to die. It's an extraordinary statement of confidence considering his injuries. In a cruel twist, the damage from one bullet is actually made worse by Wolfenbarger's vest. It ricocheted off the bottom of my vest and went in my body, out my body, and in my body again, making three holes. Another shot hits high, a sinister adjustment by the shooter. I have no doubt in my mind he was trying to shoot me in the head, but instead he shot me in the neck region. Gravely wounded, Wolfenbarger somehow gets off a shot at the suspect. My arm wasn't functioning properly, and I picked up my arm and started shooting towards his general direction. But the villain is off and running. His name is Christopher Hogan. And it's believed he may have had drugs with him during this encounter. They caught Christopher Hogan hiding under a truck within two blocks of where I was shot. I ended up losing 36 units of blood. There's eight to 11 units of blood in an average person's body. So I literally bled out over three times. Medics fear the long-term effects. Brain damage and also a possibility of me never being able to walk again. But today, Wolfenbarger has beaten all the medical odds. His wounds took him off the street. But he turned that setback into a new calling becoming a ballistics and tool mark examiner for the state of Indiana. Hogan, convicted of attempted murder, is sentenced to 54 years behind bars. I knew that I couldn't focus on hating him. I had to focus on my life, my family, and getting back to where I wanted to be. These 
were some of the most shocking moments seen from around the world. True stories of real people in real danger, as well as law enforcement officers living to tell about it.